Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and welcome to episode 1 of the random opening challenge. Brace yourselves. First I'm going to talk briefly about the rules again, so it's uh, relatively simple. So an opening was ran randomly selected, I will show you the openings in a bit. Um, you have to play the opening to the best of your ability. Um, if you, the opening requires you to play block, then you should obviously choose the color instead of nigiri. And if the opponent's moves do not allow you to play in the opening, play on normally. So I added this rule because I think uh, this helps when, like, if you have a favorite opening, your opponent obviously may not respond to the way you like. So this is kind of to help you practice as well. Uh, and then the rest of the game should be oriented towards the style of the opening. For example, if the opening is a Moyo opening, you should obviously play Moyo style. So I uh, really. I think I want to spend a little bit of time going over the goals because I actually think um, that this challenge would be uh, useful, not just fun, actually. So actually it allows you to explore different areas of this game, which you would otherwise not even have tried. Um, for example, for me, I've never really actually played the uh, Kobayashi opening very much. Um, or like, of course, uh, some of the, the uh, spoiler alert, some of the really crazy openings. Um, it also allows you to broaden your perspective of the game and I think all goes should be all about creativity. It's um, playing in areas that you haven't explored before and after that you'll get a better perspective of the shapes and uh, strategies involved. And also it's good practice for mid-game because you'll be forced to play an unfamiliar opening so probably you'll fall behind uh, which you will probably see me do as well. So, so there, without further ado, let's go over the opening. So basically I picked four from each group. Um, and I um, I decided to include Six God from the Casual Online game series because um, a lot of you guys um, have been following me for a long time and finally it's, it's you know gone up to a level where um, things are starting to get interesting. So I definitely don't want to abandon that account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play as, as if except I'm going to play the uh, so-called orthodox opening which is the uh, start point and 3-4 uh, and enclosure which faces the start point. So I'm um, basically I'm including this um, so if I roll a zero I'm going to use this account and play one of the four um, openings. Whoops. And so here we go. So I have uh, four popular openings and four so-called underdogs openings. And the first one is Sanren Se. So if you love playing this opening, you get to see me play this. Um, Kobayashi opening, um, which is quite popular actually. I'm not sure how popular it is these days, but it's definitely been quite popular um, a few years ago. Um, I saw a lot of pros playing it online. Chinese opening pretty much has popularity throughout the history of Go. Uh, fourth opening is the mini Chinese, so it's where you have star point three four and uh, the extension here. Um, so now we go to the uh, less popular openings. Um, so first I have selected this. I've always wanted to try this opening, but I never got the chance to. So this would be my chance to do it. Now, I'm not, I'm actually curious to see what the uh, AI percentage is here. Um, hopefully it's not too bad, but I named this Orthodox. Um, later you'll get to see my accounts. Um, so this opening was first played by Gosagin in 1933 against Honimbo Shusai. Um, by the way, if you haven't seen that game, it's like one of the most famous games. You should definitely um, look at that game. Um, it'll help you a lot. So, next opening is double three five. Um, so, the point being that it's tricky. This is actually one of the openings that I really enjoyed playing. So, while I play this opening, I can tell you guys some of the tricks involved in uh, perhaps how to avoid them as well. Uh, double four five. So, this is called the high eye. In, um, so I'm not really sure what this opening is really about, so I'm gonna have to test it out and see. Um, so I put apparently influence here because I'm not really sure what it's uh, meant to do. And uh, double four six, um, this is where we get uh, interesting. Now I've personally been tricked a lot by this similar Josekis here, so it's gonna be very interesting to uh, play it myself. So ready, guys? Let's do it. So, uh, oh, 
So what I have here is a uh, random number generator. Let me make this small. Oh, can I make this smaller? Okay, here we go. So I just basically going to use Google One. So from zero to eight, let's do it. Four. What's four? Mini Chinese. Okay. Here we go then. I'll log on to my Min Chinese account, and here we go. Someone invites you to play. All right, here we go then. My first opponent. A uh, bunch of numbers. <laughs> this is exciting. Um, okay, so in the case where the opponent, oh nice, he uh, played the four four. I hope he defends. Ah oh, no! Ah, oh, the first time I'm not able to do it. All right. Oh well. So, I mean, it's not all the time where you actually get to play the opening anyway, so, going by the rules. So actually, since this is a kind of a far away pincer, I think I'm okay with just taking the corner. Uh, oh, he blocked this way. Um, I usually say never block this way, no matter what, because um, for this variation, block is really nice shape getting the corner and all so um, this is generally considered a really good result for black um, so uh, yeah I think this is going to be a pretty fast game I'm going to play the high just kind of because um, okay let's shall we, shall we go in here um, well, let me just extend. This move is actually quite big. When you get Hani the head of two, it's uh, relatively uncomfortable. And my opponents were playing really fast. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like zip through this game. Um, this is part of the reason why this thing kind of is a little dumb, uh, because it it's actually not a really too strong when Black actually escapes. So I'm going to try to demonstrate that now, that this actually becomes like a mini weak group, uh, which which is part of the reason why pretty much you should never play this. If you can get the Atari, sometimes it's okay. So if black attaches, then white can wedge and connect. But in this way, it's pretty much bad. Um, oh, interesting. Um, I, I kind of wanted to uh, sort of fight here, but my opponent just extended so I'm gonna jump out here because I want to keep pressure on this group and uh, yeah I think that's a good exchange because it's difficult for white to so he can't push and if he goes this way there's a lot of Aji here so he hasn't fully connected back and also when I come back to this side then uh, he's gonna be in trouble so Oh, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. This is actually a very good move because, um, actually, is that Sente? I don't really want to respond to it. I mean, it's big, um, and if he goes in here, in here it's, he's alive, pretty much alive, but what? Um, now, this I consider um, a bad move for sure because... So right now, I'm playing this move, which threatens the jump. Even if the jump doesn't work, this move is very local. Um, so it's kind of throwing away the whole board for something kind of too small. Um, so it's not very uh, consistent. I think I can Hane down here. Because this is Sente, so I can just pretty much cut these two groups off. So the first few games are probably going to be, I'm hoping they'll be faster. 
Um, but hopefully I'll get actually Chinese openings, um, sorry, many Chinese openings <laughs> rather than um, this all the time because that's not really the, the goal of uh, playing this account. Um, I think I'm going to be pretty happy just capturing the four stones here. Don't really even need to worry about this part. But if I descend, this group is not completely alive. Okay, so we can X back. Um, I think this result is really good for black. Capturing this. So originally, this was all white's moyo. Um, except now it's, well, black's territory. So, uh, very happy with this. So, all white gain was the, the corner here. And uh, wow. Interesting. Um, should I to ignore that? Um, I guess I'll ignore it. Uh, I guess you know I'll just I'll just fight a little bit. <clears throat> so this pincer is not really threatening me. It's really just him invading. So it's quite a interesting. Move. So he's attaching here, but this this group is dead, so I can just uh, close this off. So yeah, uh, pretty smooth so far. So next opening, I'll aim to play actual the style. Okay, so he's taking a little bit more time. Um, but these moves are probably not going to work since Black already cut this group off anyway. So when he attached this time, there's no if, there's no reason for me to push because I can just capture the whole thing instead. So yeah, you should definitely not play a move like this because it's you know the action is happening here, and so playing away would usually prove to be devastating. Um, is he trying to get a co going on? I'm just going to jump. I don't think there's anything. So actually, these moves are probably bad direction on my part. Uh, because, well, my wall here, he's got stones, so I'm not really gaining anything. Instead, what I should have done is capture these two stones. Um... <clears throat> So there's actually a mild weakness here. I'm going to see if he can find it. Um, the weakness I'm talking about is after the, the Kosumi exchange, why well, can actually a Tauri and push through to cut these group, these stones off. Um, but right now, um, the, this corner is still empty, so I think this is still definitely worth um, a move. So actually one pattern that uh, I noticed when I'm playing um, three, to, 3 to 5 down players is that um, the sort of the timing for Tanuki and uh, staying locally is a little off sometimes. I think that could be a uh, pretty common mistake I would say. Especially like when I'm reviewing games, um, players around this level kind of don't really know um, when to Tanuki and not. Now, I've been thinking a little bit about this, and it's hard to like pinpoint exactly what's missing or what's causing that. Um, so I think part of that's judgment. Um, another part of that is probably maybe a bit of, definitely a bit of reading. For example, like if I don't know if there's a follow up move. For example, here, then um, I would probably just not touch it. Or if I don't know and I think it's dangerous, then I'll probably respond. So I think reading is definitely part of it. Um, so I guess I'll play this move because it's it also connects, but it threatens the push also. Yeah. Um, this is like at a point where I don't really know what to do. I guess I'll just extend here. Um, because right now, Black has a lot of territory um, pretty much everywhere. 
and uh, so he's still not taking the corner. Oh yes, so that's a, that's like the last big move around. But I think he probably should have attached and double haned or something like that. Oh, he's trying to start the co. Oh, I thought he was trying trying to start the co. <laughs> Um, my Atari there was probably a uh, impulsive move because right now he would obviously have way more coferts than I do, so that would have been definitely a bad move. Um, so in this case, Atari is probably not good because after the Atari, I have to fix anyway. So I think I'm gonna go with like something, <laughs> something weird like this. So this is this is his Sente anyway. So then. I would rather put this stone, if it was going to be here, I'm going to, I'd rather put it um, one space below instead. Um, okay, so he's actually getting somewhere, something to fight with, actually. But his corner's not alive yet. I'm not sure if he notices. Um, but I think this group is also getting surrounded pretty badly. So at this point, he definitely can't get this peep. Um, so yeah, before fighting this, he should have tried to get something, probably. And right now, it's uh, too late, so... The timing here is not... not perfect. Um, so yeah, at this point, I'm kind of out of things to say. Um, I don't know why I, I keep getting in this situation when I'm playing casual games um, like kind of early on. Yeah. <clears throat> it's gonna extend this way. Hmm. So I get a very comfortable Hane here. Um, like so, do I even need to? Um, I guess there's a lot of things I could do. Let me just protect this. It's also a sente because I can attach. So kind of like a self-defensive move to uh, get rid of all the weaknesses. Huh. Um, is he? Is, oh, he's trying to Atari here, but I can actually extend, so he can't um, Atari here. Oh, she so was actually trying to uh, protect this, which it did. So, interesting. But I think for the Liberty race, he's only got five Liberties. And he hasn't even surrounded the middle group yet, so I sh should be pretty comfortable if it actually uh, gets into it. Oh, I, I, I almost forgot the corner I can capture. Yeah, so for this fight, I think, um, in terms of, like, Go theology, um, it's, it's really obvious that you shouldn't start a fight when your opponent has a lot of stones. And this is a good example of that. White pushed and cut here, were a place where black had a whole bunch of stones, so no matter what, this fight is going to be really bad for white. Um, and we're seeing that here. So, I think that's probably one of the general, kind of one of the few um, general things about Go that actually apply in, in many cases. A lot of the theories about Go actually don't even, Nine, eight, seven, six, like, don't even apply. Five, so, four, three, <laughs> you gotta be careful with, two, like, one, kind of general patterns. Um, two, Something I used to say um, before I started teaching that um, there's no general, there's nothing is general in Go, and that's partly true. But I realized that it's not particularly useful. Like, um, I mean, you could just say that any time. So there are some generalizations. Um, just you have to be aware that things change. So. Just something to uh, keep in mind, I guess. So when your teacher teaches you something, one question—the first question you should probably ask—is when does this not work? And I bet he's gonna, your go teacher will be able to find some case where it doesn't work. Um, 
So yeah, that's go for you. Nine, eight, uh, seven, maybe he's just trying to run out of six, time now. Five, he's been playing move four, for a while, but right now, of course, three, White two, definitely has one. lost the game. And uh, there we go, claiming our first win. Very nice. All right, let's do this again. All right, here we go. We have our opponent. Um, okay, so for this opening, I don't think it matters that much. I don't. I if every time I wait until I get the cross corner, I think it's going to take a while. So let's just let's just do it this way. And uh, I'm actually really excited. Which what, what should I do? Uh, should I pincer or just? You know what? I'm going to Tanuki. I want to approach this and kind of get a triangle going. <laughs> um, okay, now I have no idea what I'm doing. So this is this is going to be really interesting. Um, I've actually I played Tengen like one time, probably when I was probably like 20 years ago, like when I was first learning Go. Um, so in this case, I definitely want to jump out because I don't want White to get influence. So I'm going to jump out and like. Oh, that's a little surprising. Uh, normally, why would jump to the right for the Joseki? Uh, okay, now now my opponent really threw me off. So, I guess I'll shoulder head as well. Still going for my triangle strategy here. Um, the push and cut shouldn't. Oh, okay, he's he's not gonna push and cut. Um, he pushed again. Uh, I can't Hane, so I guess I'll just extend, because the Hane, there's going to be too many cutting points. Uh, interesting. Okay, okay, fine. So actually now, with this result, the white stone is definitely, this white stone here is definitely better on the rest. Oh, sorry, let me turn on the coordinates. Um... Now, should I play here? I think that's that's a little too slow. So, I'm just going to do this. Oh, whoops. I didn't have the uh, screen maximized. So, I uh, hope that's okay. Alright, let's do this again. Did I get four again? Did I did that did that press count? Um Okay, let's let's just do this again. Okay, five. Okay, um if this is rigged, I blame you, Google. Uh alright. So what was number five again? Ooh, this is interesting. I get to play the Gosegan new opening. Let's do it. Yeah, so I just checked and it looked a little distorted, but it should be fine in kind of the long run. So, yeah, it should be fine. So, <laughs> the uh, I'm not sure if if Gosegan meant this opening to look like this, but I think we're doing fine because here White got a lot of uh, territory, but Black has also a lot of influence here. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so you have another Joseki. So of course all all of my moves now will try to go for maximum influence to go well with all of these stones here. But I think this uh this Joseki is good for me. Because like the shoulder hit if white extends. Oh. So that's uh that's interesting. I didn't, I don't think that worked before. Um Huh, so he's actually giving me the right side. Um, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, yeah, I'll just keep extending. And uh, yeah, these are these moves are actually quite a uh, whole board because it does limit my influence on that side quite well. 
I'm gonna jump because if I extend he probably Tanuki so um, can I please oh I think I can so that's a very nice uh, feeling to actually get to not only press him down on the right side but actually get this so yeah. <clears throat> get to Hane because now uh, my this stone is high so it's gonna help me with the enclosure so this is interesting because normally um, I think personally my whole board thinking is not very good for most pros so I'm actually glad that I'm playing this because it's definitely gonna help my whole board thinking okay so now it's the time to decide is this side bigger or is this side? this side is is huge um, if white splits this then yeah the, the upper part um, but also this kind of seems like it's sente ah okay let's 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 just think for a minute which side is bigger I don't know what do you guys think hmm we're gonna I'm gonna this also feels really bad because it's gonna help white build um decisions this game is very hard <laughs> let's let's do it I'm gonna go with the vulgar move wedge and connect and uh, get this <laughs> this is gonna be very interesting okay so he's he's gonna get in a little bit here but this this part is not as important this turn is way more important so I actually with these moves I lured him to spend another move here which is good and if he doesn't go in we should definitely win right how can how can he give me all of this um okay that's probably just my ex oh that's that was my excuse of like laziness to count I was actually worried that he will um, be ahead if he just let me have this but I highly doubt that so <laughs> okay here we go um I think I'll definitely pincer. He's not really going to do anything to my stone that I shouldn't worry too much about. Um, attack, you know, just hide this way. Um, I, do I need to extend here? I'll just capture it. If you're I'll just connect. And uh, as long as I'm alive after capturing this, he doesn't have any ice. He's gonna go right into my wall. No, I'll just connect. There's still no eyes. Well, there's there could be half an eye there, but I can I'm gonna take away this one immediately. And uh, as he, as white goes into the center, it's really hard to make eyes in the center. So I'm gonna be happy. If he goes into the center, and uh, this actually just turns out to be a, a dragon slaying mission. Um, <clears throat> so, well, Mm. Okay, these were probably not very good moves. Um, I shouldn't have just. I shouldn't have made him stronger. Actually, I played a little too quickly there, but it shouldn't be no problem because White still has zero eyes. So uh, even in the event that he can make one, I should uh, still be able to kill this quite nicely. So <laughs> um, hopefully, I don't like. Hopefully it doesn't miraculously live, that would be uh, now pretty awkward there. Um, so he's still trying to get his first eye. And I'm going to make it as hard as possible for him. But like, as the more he goes in, like all of these are my stones. So whether he finds a weakness somewhere, um, or else it's just going to be easy for me. So, okay, that's a good move, because that guarantees him one of the eyes. But, where is he going to find the second one?
Um, let's just protect. Should I? Do I even need to protect that cut? Probably don't, but he probably tries something. Um, at this time, probably Nine, a lot of moves will work. Eight, seven, um, so. Six, five. Yeah, I'll just do this move. Um, like when you're trying to attack, like when your mission is only to kill a dragon, you should try to get like these Kosumi points. And you shouldn't, you should never kind of, you should never attach on to them. Um, that's kind of like the general um, attacking rule is you shouldn't latch on to your opponent's stones because then it'll give, you know, uh, make it easier for them to find something. So, not only am I saving the stone, but I'm actually threatening the eye here, so. Yeah, the more he plays, the harder it will be to uh, live. <clears throat> and, you know, there's absolutely no space. Um, so, yeah, this this is... Um, it's, I think the deed is, is complete. Um, so there's no eye on this side. It's impossible here, nothing here, nothing here. So there's only one half eye. Um, in the middle here. And that's the only one. So yeah, I'm playing moves kind of to avoid like direct contact. And that's a I think that's a good uh general strategy. <coughs> oh, this is a good move. And uh you see like when you get at your opponent's weakness, that's where you actually start to make forcing moves. And when you make when you make forcing moves um, it's gonna make it easy. Oh, he should push this way, I think. Because that's not really Sente. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to capture this no problem then. I think if he pushed out here, he might have make the game much more complicated since I'm gonna have that cutting point. And I'm, I'm gonna have to try to save these zones. Um, but in this case, it's going to be no problem. Um, just have to, like, protect all my cutting points. And, uh, should be good. Uh, in this case, I should probably just cut. Because I can connect back in time, really. So. Um, yeah. The deed has been... The dragon has been slain. Uh, I didn't really... I mean, when you, if you were to invade like this, you should definitely do it early. Um, as I always say, but... When you invade this late, chances are it's going to get captured. Even if you're a really strong player. So... Yeah, I don't know what to say. I think in the beginning... For this Joseki, typically white answers on this side, which is the reason why um, white doesn't play the tiger's milk typically. White typically extends, so when black plays the Kosumi or Knightsman, white can answer on the left side instead. Um, but with this move, typically white answers, so because this move, the move I played Q14 in this game. It's actually quite severe. Oh, and, and we did it. And my opponent resigned. So, interesting game. I really enjoyed playing this game, actually. I've uh, never really played the this opening <laughs> before. So, two to second mistakes. Um, one, what should definitely extend on the right side. And then that would be regular. I was going to, like, pincer and start fight. Um, but this would be the regular Joseki. And if... White does this and jumps out. Later on, there's this wedge, which can capture the stone. Or, or cut this stone off, at least. So that's kind of the regular Joseki. And, and another um, mistake, oh, whoops, um, was kind of a bit later on. Yeah, so here, when I was talking about this Joseki, typically White does the two series extension immediately. Um, rather than to play the tiger's mouth. After the tiger's mouth, White needs to respond here. And yeah, uh, pretty interesting game. I'm, I'm actually really excited to play the next one. So let's find our next opponent. Alright, here we go then. What will it be? 
1. Let's see what 1 is. Oh, the Sun Rinsei. Let's get him. All right, and we are back. Three star. Here we go. So you might be wondering, well, this guy has white. What is? How is he going to play Sun Rinsei? Well, you don't have to be black to be to play Sun Rinsei. Um, actually, most of the time you do. But oh, here we go, Sun Rinsei. Actually, I had this opening um, as part of the list, but I didn't get selected for um, this particular uh, uh, set. So, no. <laughs> so, should I do the should I do the pincer? Hmm. Yeah, typically the pincer is actually a result that I don't really like because black takes territory in sente. Um, and uh, whenever Guli plays this Sanren he always plays the jump. So, or actually, he typically approaches and then plays Sanren which is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, my opponent jumps so, because uh, he probably didn't want me to have the influence. And uh, actually, this is something that I've noticed as well. I think from players on Fox that are around. 1 to 5 done, probably 1 to 3 done. They like to play the jump a lot, and this just Joseki happens a lot. Uh, I'm not sure why, but the preference kind of disappears when, this, as soon as they get to uh, maybe 5 or 6 done, which is interesting. It's kind of like a pattern. Um, and I can't explain it. Alright, so normally black doesn't pincer. Because after you pincer, um, um, and you play the knight's move, this group is very weak. So as you can see here, I'm uh, chasing this group down. So this is interesting. Um, some of you might not know that after this, white can actually push. And the third three. Sorry, not three three, but this cutting this cut doesn't work. So all black can do is capture the cornerstone, and if that's okay with you, and you can push through, this is actually a uh, good exchange, or it's a good move to play right now, because after this, then you can go back to protect the cutting point. Uh, so wow, he's he's just exchanging everything, isn't he? Do I want to block or attach? Actually. Yep, don't want to attach because it's going to make him stronger, and also it doesn't prevent black from connecting under. So, this weak group is, uh, I'm still chasing him down. It's not alive yet. He's going to peep all these. <laughs> yeah. So when you have a weak group like this, it's uh, it's really, really heavy. So I can just chase it down because it only has one eye and it can't be captured. And uh, this type of heavy group is difficult. Oh, you can play the knight's move here. That would be a good. Oh, he's just jumping out. But I wasn't sure what it, what I was gonna do when he did the knight. I probably extend to the right. Uh, okay, let's just enclose off this side. Um, I think that's good. Mm hmm. So now do I keep attacking this or do I do something else? Uh, both are probably okay. I think if I just Tanuki he slide in here is probably big, but I think I mean look at the bottom half of the board, it's like completely empty. So I think I wanna do something down here. Uh, I'll just approach. Hmm. Not gonna be too violent this time. <laughs> huh, it does the pincer. Normally when uh, black plays the middle here, black does the one space jump and tries to lure white to attach here. I was actually taught this. Well, I wasn't taught this, but someone showed this to me. And uh, it's was, it was quite an interesting. There's a lot of trick moves 
with this kind of similar shape, which makes it very interesting. Um, if you want to see this opening, I can do it probably in the next um, set. But uh, yeah, what happens if I just attach? Uh, probably don't need to attach. What I want to do is actually want to try to like separate the upper side. Um, I want to, you know, in light of like being creative, which is like the whole point of the series, I want to try like kind of unorthodox moves as well. I think this would be interesting. Um, how is he going to connect back? Oh, he's not trying to connect back. That's not what I expected, actually. Uh, so now if I attach, should I attach? So my instinct right now is to try to bully the stone. Um, what do I want to do here? Oh, I'm taking a lot of time for no reason. Um, okay. I don't think there's much of a difference even if he got the peep, but... I just felt like extending, so I did. So I'll connect back. Kind of made this stone a bit heavier. I'm not sure if that, that exchange was, was even good or not, but... Okay, fine. <laughs> I'll connect. <coughs> So this stick looks kind of heavy, but there's actually a lot of places for white to make eyes, so I'm not really worried about that group. And so I think I'm free to attack this side a little bit. So now if he hides this way and pulls back, I can wedge. And uh, since I have those two stones, this Joseki won't be quite like the one you play normally. Um, my my opponent is actually playing very well, I think. Um, but th this group is going to be quite small because he's now he's he's forced to make this group alive. Hmm, <coughs> good move. If he pushed, um, even though it looks sente, but then he would protect back. He would have to protect back anyway, so that wouldn't be a very good move. But this is a good move because it actually threatens both groups. Now, now, now that I think about it, I probably should have honeyed and connected instead of what I did, or honey and extend. Hmm, I'm not sure. Uh, one thing I could do now is to threaten the upper group actually. Should I Hane and do a knight's move? That looks good. Actually, but if I Hane... Uh, you know what? I'm just going to protect this group first. I don't want to risk it too much. Because if I Hane and he captures this, then it's not really clear that this, this group is dead. But even if it's dead, it would be like a trade. Uh, which is not that bad for him, so it's not something that I want. Um, but in this case, I couldn't give it up because not only he gave me this move, but also I have a double Hane, so this group is not completely captured, which makes this a good result for White now. So it looks it looks like a subtle difference, and it actually looks like White died even more. But actually, it gave gave this part enough Aji that it's not completely dead. And also, Black spent more moves um, than if Black were to just cut. <coughs> yeah, this Hane is a uh, it's a very possible move because I I have some co threats here to uh, threaten the cuts. So he's what is what is he trying to do? He's actually trying to cut my stick off. But look how many liberties it has. So even if he can, it's it's not even going to be close the liberty race. So I'm not worried about that at all. And not to mention I can just cut. 
So I'm actually not sure what I should do anymore. Um, I don't think I should cut. Um, I should probably go for something bigger. Because in the Liberty race, I can just capture this very easily. There's there's seven outside Liberties, which is like really unheard of. Um, so I'm, I should be comfortable there. So even if, if Black spends the first move, I'm very confident that uh, White would still win the Liberty race. <coughs> Crosscut. Interesting. Uh, I'll just extend back. Oh, I probably shouldn't have. I should have Atari first. I should have Atari and then extend back. Even though there's a cut there, but then if we block Atari's, I can uh, Atari here. So actually, extending back is a bad move because now Black can extend. And now if I extend, there's a lot worse Aji here. But now that I look at it, it should be fine. Shouldn't be a problem, yeah. Yeah, so I think for Black, in order to run this out, he, sh he should definitely like take a look at the Liberty race. Um, because there's no way he can have seven outside Liberties here. And White clearly has a row of seven, so... Yeah, should be relatively straightforward. Um, in this case, I'll just capture the center. Um, it's not a big deal. He get he got a big profit here, but I think this this is also a big territory, which uh, should put us in a comfortable lead. Not to mention, like there's more, like there's, there's more up here, and there's more potential in the corner. And also he has this Hane to worry about, which is like a free two moves for me at some point. But now since he's getting captured, he's going to have some co as well. Um, but since I'm ahead, I don't really want to fight the co. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just play normally and just disregard this. Um, I'm not sure what he's thinking about. I mean, he's gonna have to capture, right? So, yeah, I'm not sure what he's thinking about. Whoa! Uh, I'm really tempted to just capture this. I think this is way bigger than the center, but you know, to not like if the simple if the simplest move works, that is a good sign that you don't need to try anything special. <clears throat> so that's actually a really good rule of thumb to go by because um the worst feeling is when you're ahead and you uh you lose and if you don't know you should watch my uh transatlantic commentary. Oh but it happens to all of us, so... What? How? Oh, he can Atari and connect? I didn't even see that, but... I don't think it's gonna come close. Um, it gives White a flower, and just from but the feeling of it, it's gonna be really hard to escape White's wrath. And also, Black has no liberties. Like, literally four. So I can just, like, push inside if he tries to cut. So I think the uh, take-home message for today is probably judgment. Not like judgment in like a really accurate sense, but kind of just generally um, 
judgment. And what, by that I mean, like, the way you start a fight, um, in this case, why, the reason why I started a fight here is because I have this wall. So, whatever happens here, Black's having some stones, it's going to be close to the wall, it's going to be pressured. And, but Black starting all these fights here, especially later on, it, it's kind of, it's definitely not going to work because White just has too many stones. And look at how many liberties that group, I, I keep, I, I'll stop talking about this, but um, the wall of seven. So I think that's definitely going to be theme. All right, let's do one more game. So let's see what's next. Six. Okay. What is six? Um, ooh, double three five. Let's do it. And we are back with an opponent. Three five point. Let's go. So this is actually one of the corners that I, I'm personally relatively familiar with. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, this is the famous Taisha corner. Um, so I'm gonna play like a I'm gonna pretend they're star points, and this is actually a typical opening style that um, a lot of pros like to play when they're double star points. But except I have uh, two three fives there. Um, yeah, looking good. So my uh, lower side completely looks like I'm an AI. But little, little did you know, I have two, uh, three, five points there. <clears throat> so we have this again. Oh, typically white blocks, but uh, we have white extending this time. Um. Okay, I prob I should probably like have a plan before just like keep playing moves. Um, right now it's getting close, so I d I think I should defend the corner. If I play the knight's move, white can just do a two space extension, and I think that's going to be too comfortable. Wow, we have a very fighting spirit, um, but we never back down because it's three five. We're here to trick people. Um, in this case, I think this is probably a good fight for black because uh, white starts out in a dumpling shape. So some, a lot of time, even if the net doesn't work, you make the opponent into a dumpling shape and it's and it's good. So what my, my opponent plays like every two seconds. I'm going to have to do another game after this. Play slower. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to cut, but... Um, if I cut, he can push here, um, which is sente, and then he can net, so I don't think that's a good result. I'm going to keep pushing. This is actually quite dangerous if white uh, turns. So, uh, I'm going to capture this side, and in, in this shape, uh, um, actually, uh-huh yeah I don't know if it's worth it to capture it so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it for now in terms of whole board thinking I don't want to get surrounded here so I think I think I just let him live um, and the way to capture this it, it leaves a lot of liberties maybe I'll show it like if you're interested if you're curious how to capture this group um, when I review later but uh, yeah, there is a way to capture it, but now I kind of, now I'm kind of thinking maybe I should have captured it, <clears throat> but I wasn't really sure how it would go. I kind of want to invade here. So actually, in terms of the progress, we haven't, we haven't actually uh, gotten any lead. So what's been quite well for so far? I don't invade this right now. <coughs> um, yeah, I'm 
Okay. Normally you don't want to exchange the Hana and Connect because it uh, reduces a lot of Aji. So you're kind of limiting your the, the amount of possibilities for yourself when you do something like this. For example, right now this stone would be much better here because for the peep, um, it would be much more severe. But now I can just escape quite easily because you can't push and cut. Um, which is actually a lot of trouble for him. Now this group is a, actually a weak group. Um, now I just capture this and uh, so this actually turns out to be a super good result because not only oh nice that's a very good move um, very good move nice to Suji it, he can't block normally because I can cut and so he plays this move first which is a forcing move because I have to respond and then he comes back to block very good move I didn't see that um, so no problem with this though, there's a Hane and double Hane because I can still threaten to, to uh, cut here. It's very aggressive, I'm, I'm noticing like the players on Fox, they just like to uh, try and capture everything. Um, so this is, <laughs> this is very interesting. All right, fine. We'll we'll fight it out <laughs> as you wish. Um, but I guess it's you know people probably I mean like most players have like thousands of games, so assuming just uh, playing for fun. Uh, oh, not a not a bad fighter. Gotta protect the cut. And now he's going to go for this move. Oh. I thought he would uh, go for the Kosumi. The Kosumi is very important for the life and death of this group, actually. Um, and I think White should have gone for it. But now, White actually has to spend a move on the first line in order to capture, or that. That also works. And uh, did I get captured? No, I'm pretty sure I didn't. Because connecting is sente. So when I hane, the middle is... Or at least I have a ko, so it's, it's definitely no problem. Um, not to mention I can hane right now. And uh, before it was starting to look... Uh, dangerous for me, but I think all of a sudden this is starting to look really good now. Um, let me just play here. I can connect back, but this is one move, and I don't want him to Atari and Sente. Actually, if I extend now, isn't this group dead? It is, actually. <laughs> um, so he has to fix. But this group is also not alive. Because it's, there's six here in a row. If I exchange this white connects, there's six in a row. So it's not alive. And I'm pretty sure I can just enclose this somehow. Can I enclose this? Um, how should I attack this actually? Let's do the press. <clears throat> Double honey. Oh, actually, now I have a good move. Um, since he didn't exchange the push, um, I can attach and cut. And now if he tries to push here, I can Atari. So now, he is definitely dead. <laughs> because um, there's six here, and I just got rid of this uh, last potential to make an eye.
and that's all sent to me. So now I could do to do whatever I want. Um, well, not whatever I want, but I have a lot of options in general. Uh, I think what I can do is just Atari and then extend. So I protect the uh, cut over here. And in terms of the middle, he can't really enclose the middle group. So not worried at all. Uh, yep, that's Sente. Oh, you can double Hane. Um, but these these don't really work um, because I can just give it to them, and they're not really helping the center as of yet. Uh, so yeah. I could just, just like make this group alive, I think. Oh, there's there is a small shortage of livery issue actually. That I should uh, make sure doesn't that doesn't happen. So actually he probably didn't see I actually have an eye over here. Um because when I play the tiger's mouth, because of the shortage of liberties, he has to connect. So I have, I can make an eye here. Um so that's gonna be no problem. I'm just going to play here to get rid of the shortage of liberties. And also, like, the outside is completely... If I just push and cut, I can just capture the stones anyway. Um, I'll just haunt it first. Oh, God. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's, that's not a good move. Um, yeah, I can actually just push and cut and capture the outside as well. Um, because the outside is too weak, so it's going to be a long shot. So, um, I'm actually pretty happy that I played that decision. Oh, actually, he can jump. I'm, I'm really making things more complicated than it needs to be. Um, but it's 3-5, and 3-5 needs a fighting spirit, so we're going to fight to the end. And, uh, he's just gonna get cut here. Ooh. <laughs> Good game. Uh, okay, well, I don't want to keep playing. So I was going to show you guys how to capture the left side. This is actually a pretty famous uh, shape actually. Um, I'm not going to talk about extending um, because if black extends the right side is too complicated but what, black can just play here and black can't play here because after capturing it's a liberty raise so I'm just going to go over variation where you connect. So if white plays here um, so here's the thing, if you attach, um, so this is Sente, if you attach, if white has a Hane in Sente, then this group is alive. Um, but, um, so actually, uh, that's like, like this, so if there's a Hane here, this group is alive. If there's no Hane, this is dead. So if white descends here, black can actually exchange this move and uh, make this dead shape. So, there's your uh, daily life and death for you. All right, so um, what happened in this game? So I think in the beginning, I was kind of uh, a little kind of playing, like there's no reason why I haunted, I probably just extended. Um, so this fight originally shouldn't have been very good for me. Um, after extending out, well, I can just play the knight's move here and it'll be like a regular fight. Later on, white can come back here, which is a big move. Because uh, white can block and turn, which is which are both very comfortable sente moves. Um, but this is, I believe, a mistake, because after Atari, white is made into a dumpling shape before white is even able to go to the center. So you can see after this group, it's going to limit white's potential here. 
And uh, after, a, like, my opponent's probably just not reading as much as you play, but I've, this is actually a very nice move. Um, because why can't block directly? So very nice to Suji here. Um, here, I was a little too... going a little too hard. Um, why can actually play the Kosumi. And uh, I think it's going to be hard for this group to live. Just kind of by instinct, because... So this is Sente. Um, why should I actually connect? And now, it's hard to make um, two eyes, actually. Yeah, now even connecting is not a sure eye. If white block, the send is sente. So that actually matters a little bit here. If block captures, then white can just jump. Um, so I believe, yeah, this is difficult to live. So white can just, could have just captured this. And uh, probably going to be an even game, because black has a lot of corners. Um, this Remember, this was originally white's territory. So black just invaded. Um, kind of view this as a reduction. So black can like play here or something, or at least jumping in is going to be sente. Um, so yeah, there's kind of annoying moves in the bottom. So pro probably black is ahead because this is only the only territory for white. But yeah, um, yeah. So what was interesting was what happened here. Um, yeah, normally why would turn? I mean, it would happen. But in this game, white extended. Maybe. Is it the case that I should play the knight's move? Or was what happened when I played in the game okay? Um, so, this is probably the best local move, but it's kind of a conflict of interest because now uh, the middle here is a weak group. So. I'm actually quite uncertain about this. Let me know what you guys think about this. Um, would you play here? Or would you go for consistency? Anyway, so that's... I think that's going to be it for today. I played quite a few games today. Hope you guys are enjoying the format. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. And hope you learned something. If you enjoyed the video, uh, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like. And I will see you next time.